The data industry is changing fast. AI is automating tasks, job descriptions are evolving, and competition is higher than ever. So how do you stand out in a sea of talented candidates? In today's video, I'll share a simple yet effective roadmap to land a data analyst role in 2025. And I'll also share three tips that I don't see being talked about very often that might just be the reason why you aren't getting hired. So make sure you stick around to the very end. I will preface this video by saying that data analytics can be very broad and the same job title can mean very different things between different companies. Some roles will be more business facing, whereas others could be more technical, focusing more on data engineering or data science. But regardless of what type of data analyst you want to be, this roadmap I'm about to share today will help you get your foot through the door. First things first, you need to be comfortable with manipulating data in either Excel or Google Sheets. And I know you're probably sitting there rolling your eyes thinking, I'm here to learn Python, not Excel, but trust me, Excel isn't going anywhere. Even in the most data-driven companies, there will always be pivot tables to build, ad hoc data for you to analyze and visualize, and non-technical stakeholders for you to work alongside. Spend some time familiarizing yourself with key concepts such as VLOOKUPs, some ifs, pivot tables, charting, and how to do conditional formatting. There are honestly so many free resources on the internet to learn Excel, or feel free to even go to ChatGPT. If you're stuck with a formula, it'll literally correct your errors and generate a new formula for you. You can also ask ChatGPT to guide you through creating a pivot table. It'll have all the steps ready for you as well. Next, learn SQL. Because data lives in databases and SQL is the language that lets you communicate with databases and manipulate your data. No matter what data role you are applying for, SQL will be a core part of the job interview and also your day-to-day -day tasks. I recommend getting really, really comfortable with your basics, your case wins, your window functions, and your CTEs, and you should be good to go. I will leave a link on the screen to my SQL crash course that should cover everything you need to know to ace a data interview. And I also popped some of my other favorite resources up on the screen right now. We've got W3 Schools, which is great for beginners, Hacker Rank, and Interview Query, where you can practice real SQL interview questions asked at some of the largest tech companies. Next, it's time to learn a programming language. Even with AI and large language models being able to generate code, you still need to know how to read, write, and debug code. I used to recommend either R or Python, but after having learned and coded in both, I will strongly recommend Python over R. In Python, I would focus on these key packages, NumPy and Pandas for data manipulation and analysis, Matplotlib and Seaborn for visualizations, and if you ever want to learn the basics of machine learning, read up on scikit-learn. To get started with Python, there are so many free resources out there, but make sure once you've completed one course or watched one video, stop and practice what you've learned because nothing will help you learn faster than by actually just jumping into the code and doing it yourself. You can use sites like LeetCode, HackerRank, or Interview Query to help you practice your Python interview skills. Or alternatively, ask ChatGPT to come up with a custom Python project that you can work through and then put onto your resume. Moving on, every data analyst needs to be comfortable with visualizing their data to tell a story. How can you create engaging charts to best communicate your ideas and your insights to your non-technical stakeholders? After all, your role as a data analyst is to analyze data and turn it into actionable business insights. Now, different companies will use different tools like Tableau, Power BI, Looker, but the fundamentals stay the same. I will leave a good article down below. Take a read. It covers the four key dashboarding principles. Now, the next thing on the roadmap is to get comfortable with using AI and be familiar with large language models. Because AI won't take your jobs, but another candidate who can use AI more effectively might actually take your job. I would highly recommend reading up on prompt engineering and maybe even trial connecting to OpenAI's API yourself and give it some dummy data and see what magic AI can generate. I truly believe that AI and large language models will become a core part of future job requirements for any role in the data industry. And those who don't keep up will get left behind. Now on the topic of using AI to complement your learning journey, if you'd like some more guidance to learn data analytics, today's sponsor Wisdom Plan might be really helpful. If you're wanting more structure with your learning, this AI powered tool does all the heavy lifting for you. With just a few inputs, Wisdom Plan builds a personalized learning roadmap in minutes. No more scrambling for resources, which Python video to watch or manually creating study plans. As an example, here I am generating a plan for data analytics by writing in what I want to achieve. I've popped in my current background and my learning preferences, and I have my own custom plan within two minutes. Wisdom Plan instantly organizes courses, 
documents and web resources into a structured step-by-step -step plan with progress tracking. And the best part, it's built with collaborative learning in mind. You can share your plans, change them if you don't like it, and even connect with fellow learners on their Discord. They've even got an AI tutor available to answer any questions that you might have during your learning process. And once you're done, you'll receive a certificate that you can put onto your LinkedIn. If you'd like an effective structured roadmap to help you start learning data analytics, feel free to check out Wisdom Plan. I will have a link down in my description box below, and this code should also give you 25% off. Thank you again to Wisdom Plan for sponsoring this portion of the video, and let's get back into it. And lastly, in a sea of very talented candidates, you need to stand out with a portfolio. Now, this should be a collection of at least two to three projects. Make sure you document your entire process from the initial idea, the business problem, your exploratory data analysis, and any findings that you have. I would highly recommend using free Jupyter notebooks for your entire project and then adding them into your GitHub repository so you can share it with future employers. Building a portfolio will help you showcase your skills all in one place. And honestly, even the process of constructing the portfolio should boost your confidence. In terms of topic ideas, you can do the free route via Kaggle, but if you want to stand out even further, find the topic that you are passionate about and leverage ChatGPT to help you come up with something cool. Remember, you'll likely have to go through these projects together in your interview process and your passion will shine through. And lastly, a few non-negotiables aside from your technical skills, firstly would be your attention to detail. Now this is a no-brainer. So much of our days is spent coding and filtering through redundant data. You've got to ensure that your output is reliable. So attention to detail is really, really important. Next would be the ability to communicate. Remember, your executives don't care about how technical your work is. They only care about the business value that your work can add. So please, please focus on tangible results that your insights can deliver, preferably in a dollar value or a percentage improvement. So compare these two scenarios. One analyst come back saying, our model predicts customer churn at 8% versus another that says, if we offer targeted discounts to these specific customers, we can reduce churn by 15% and increase $500,000 in revenue next quarter. What are your stakeholders going to resonate with more? So remember to be very business orientated, put yourself in your CEO's shoes. What do they expect from your work? Really try to understand how and why the work that you are doing will bring your business closer to their goals. And don't just be a data monkey or do a data delivery for the sake of delivering one. And now that you have all these skills, it's time to get yourself out there. Send LinkedIn messages to recruiters or directly message hiring managers about any open roles and pitch yourself. I would highly recommend watching this video up on the screen right now to make sure that your resume is in its best shape possible because remember that is the only thing a future employer will see. I hope today's video helped. All the best on your data analytics journey and as always, I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.